Hi everyone, this is Jacob, and I thought I would do something kind of interesting today. It is a read aloud of one of my stories. Um, yeah, and I also drew some of, I mean, cool yet not super high detailed pictures to help explain the story. So this one of my stories, um, as you can see from the title up there, it's, it's called Carly. So, um, I will just read it to you guys, and, um, yeah, I, um, have the words by me, and I will show you guys the pictures. So, yeah, here we go. Carly. Sunday. Hi, my name is Carly. I am eight years old and in third grade. This is the start to my new diary I've been wanting to do for years. I have had the journal for almost a year since my last birthday, and I've only just now got to use it. So, today is Sunday, a typical February morning in Ohio, freezing cold outside and a blanket of snow as far as the eye can see. A blanket of white for miles. I walked downstairs for breakfast and saw Mom making pancakes. Good morning, honey, she said. That's the first thing I hear every morning, even though I tell her not to call me honey because I am big now and in third grade. But she never listens. I sat at the table and Mom served me my pancake. I had just woken up, but I was exhausted from the climb downstairs. I've been having some heart rate problems recently, and I've been exhausted even after just five minutes of standing up, practically doing nothing. So, a little bit about myself. First off, I love animals. I have a pet fancy mouse named Maria, and I love her. I know I sound insane, but ju just think about it for a minute. Imagine if there were no animals in the world. No mice, no rabbits. No elephants, eels, weasels, pufferfish, turtles, iguanas, cows, cheetahs, zebras, cats. What about dogs? It's just amazing. My favorite color is green, and my favorite food is fettuccine. I have never really been much into video games, except for Dig Dug, a classic arcade game, and I don't like many sports except for riding my bike. But I haven't really been able to do that lately due to my lack of energy. Bummer. School. The best word to describe it is interesting. You never know what will happen when you walk into the building and at the end of the day you tell your parents about it. I am pretty shy and don't have many friends except Mar for Maria. Yes, I did name my pet fancy mouse after her. I have great grades, and my mom definitely lets everyone know. People tend to see me as weird because I don't like video games or sports, and I like mice. But really, I'm pretty nice if I do say so myself. I guess because I hardly ever speak to anyone, they think I'm disinterested in them. It's actually the exact opposite. I would like to have some friends. At least I have Maria, but still. So today at school, today is Monday, we did our usual things. Morning work, ELA, social studies, lunch, you know. Since most of the snow had melted, we had our recess. And Maria and I just swung and talked about music. Yes, music, but not the kind of music you're probably thinking of. We like old music. Perry Como, Johnny Mathis, all the crooners. The other kids at school don't really call it music, but we don't even call it music. We call it magic. Music is pretty much my life. After recess, we went back inside and did some writing. I love writing. It's my favorite subject. Oh yeah, and Will, the class meanie, was as usual, was as usual teasing us about our favorite music and Thomas the Tank Engine. Yes, we like Thomas, but we don't care what he says about it. Then the phone rang. The office said 
I had to leave early. I packed up and headed to the office, where my mom was waiting for me. The reason I was leaving is because I had to go to the doctor for my yearly checkup, because my birthday was coming up. Usually we wait until it gets a little closer to my birthday, but he had an open appointment. Yeah, an open appointment for earlier, so we just decided to go for it. So the nurse weighed me and checked my temperature. Then Doctor Mango came in and checked my eyes, ears, mouth, nose, and heart. Yes, I did have to get a shot too, but it wasn't super bad. My results looked fine, and he said I was in great shape, but he was a little worried about my heartbeat increase and my extensive sleepiness. When I got home, we had a snack and then started cleaning Maria, the mouse's, cage. While we were setting her cage back up, however, I started feeling exhausted again. I could feel my heart beating fast, and I had a headache, too. It got worse. I was finally, I was about to finally tell mom, but I couldn't remember what I was going to say. Then, I passed out. Tuesday. I don't remember much else about the incident, but after it happened, mom said she called Dr. Mango. He had already scheduled me for an appointment to get me checked out and hopefully figure out why I've been so sleepy. But since he had a cancellation, he scheduled me for the next day, Tuesday. So here we are. I was nervous when the nurse came to get at us from the waiting room. She weighed me again and all these things. Then she sent us to a different section of the building to do what she called a table tilt test. She checked after she checked my temperature she and my see, saw how tall I was, she asked me to lay on the examination table. After laying there for a few minutes, she checked my blood pressure and heart rate. Then she asked me to sit up. Then after a few minutes, she checked my blood pressure and heart rate again. Then she had me stand up. I was very confused as to why she was having me do these seemingly pointless things. Then, she said, I had to stand up, still, and straight for ten minutes. I did as I was told. I could see my blood pressure and heart rate going up on the screen. After about five minutes, however, I started feeling lightheaded and sleepy. I was scared I might pass out again, but I ended up making it through. Barely. I sat back in the chair next to Mom, feeling exhausted. The nurse left, and we sat there anxiously, not knowing what we would find when the doctor came in. Dr. Mango was still my doctor that day. He had asked me some questions while checking out the papers describing my problems. He also examined my test results when the nurse brought them in. After reading silently, he turned around in his chair and said... You have pots. M Monday. Yes, so it turns out I have a disorder called pots. I guess it's where there's a lack of blood flow into my upper body, like my where my brain is, which makes me feel lightheaded, and then it's hard to remember things. Then, to try to pump blood into my brain, my heart works harder and beats faster, which makes me more sleepy. I still don't fully understand it. I was only saying what Dr. Mango said, but apparently I passed out because of lack of blood. As you've probably noticed by now, I can't stand up for too long without my pots acting up, so I will have to use a wheelchair while traveling for long periods of time. I hate the idea of using a wheelchair, but I guess it's my only option for now. So I stayed home the rest of the week to try and take in my recent experiences as well as, con 
contacting Dr. Mango about the tips on how to manage pots. Then I returned to school on Monday, but everyone was shocked as I came into the classroom with a wheelchair. Everyone quickly surrounded me and started asking questions like, what happened, when, and how? Then Willie pushed through the crowd. Look, there's little Miss Wheelie. What happened? Did you crash because you're clumsy? Everyone giggled. But then Maria pushed through the crowd. Willie, you can't be picking on my best friend, she shouted. Now, class, said our teacher, Mrs. Sweeter, this is no way to treat your classmates. I was so embarrassed. I wheeled myself out of the classroom. Wait, shouted Maria. Come back. And before the teacher could say anything, she ran away to find me. At least I think it's what happened. Since I was, after all, out of the room. But anyways, she eventually found me on the swings. I knew I'd find you here, she said as she walked up and sat beside me. So what's the real reason you're in a wheelchair? I sniffled and take, took a deep breath and began to explain. I have something called POTS, I said, which is where I can't stand up for too long without passing out. All right, go ahead and laugh. Why? asked Maria. There's nothing funny about it. Oh, thank you for being understanding, I said. But will you still be my best friend? Oh, yeah, she exclaimed. Always. Always, I asked. Always, she replied. Now let's get back to class. Friday. A few weeks passed and I got on fine. It was a little strange in a wheelchair at first, but I got used to it. Finally, it was the very special Friday. My birthday. It was a blast. We had a celebration at Chuck E. Cheese, and all my relatives, friends, and family, and of course, Maria came. We ate pizza, we watched the animatronic show, and we danced with Chuck E. We, and we played games for hours on end. It was spectacular. Now, there's no cure for pots yet, but, I ju but just because I have it doesn't mean I can't have fun. Plus, Mom says I can get something called a port soon to help me be able to stand up for longer. Soon it was cake time. I was excited, and everyone started singing the Chuck E. Cheese Birthday Star song. Then, I blew out the candles happily. Oh, and my wish? Well, I wished for more fun moments. Just like this. There is the story called Carly. Here's my little book. Um, let me let me know if you guys like it. Um, and if you did, maybe I will um, do some more stories, read some more stories of mine for you. Um, yeah. And maybe um, I'll even make a second book um, so you can hear more about Carly <laughs> and um, what happens to her. So, um, yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope this was a nice little kind of, I guess, fun, entertaining, educational, inspirational story for you. And, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and... See ya.